Hey everyone, and welcome back to Country Music Made Me. Thank you so much for joining us once again. As always, please be sure to like, share, follow, subscribe to us wherever you are listening. You can leave a review, a rating, tell your friends, your family, your neighbors to come on over and have a listen. That support is huge. Today, we're joined by Ashland Craft. Now, her journey began as a youngster, uploading cover songs to YouTube. After a few years of that, following graduation from high school, she joined the house band at a local bar. Now, after a couple of years of performing there, she tried out for and competed on The Voice. That helped jumpstart things enough that she was able to move to Nashville to pursue a career in country music. It all culminated in earlier September of this year when she released her debut album, Travelin' Kind. So please enjoy our conversation with Ashlyn Craft. Let's go back to about four years old and you start playing the piano. Now, what memories do you have of that time? Because a lot of the time I talk to musicians who played the piano and it was their parents who pushed them into it and they didn't necessarily enjoy it. So back then, was it your parents who were sort of pushing you towards the music? Well, I think, um, so when I was in daycare, I've been told that I was heard singing under a table. So apparently all the people in my life very much trusted me with this dream that I had. So I think their goal was just to get me immersed in as as many musical things as possible. And so I took piano lessons for about four years. I can, I can still pretty much remember that time, um, sang in church, sang in, any restaurants that would have me before, you know, I was able to get into the bars. And then after, after the restaurants, I just tried to get every opening act or bar gig I could. And then I worked at uh, the bar that I call home, Wendell's Dippin' Branch for two years. And that was where I really learned about, you know, the whole entertainment side of things. So it's always been this constant uh, progression of how much I can get into music. But those days, I definitely think they're very beneficial because, Uh, learning piano actually made me learn how to play guitar. Um, And I taught myself because I knew at that point what music sounded like. So it definitely gave me some, uh, some good things to carry on with me throughout this experience. And so as far as teaching yourself guitar and wanting to do that, did you grow up in a musical household where it was all around? So you were influenced by it or did you just pick it up on your own along the way? Uh, my parents have always loved great music. They've always had great taste in music, but nobody in my family uh, plays any instruments or anything. So not really quite sure where it came from, but I did have a great uncle who passed away who gifted me, uh, you know, a couple of his guitars that he left behind. And um, he knew I loved music, country music. And then those sat in the corner for a while until I was like, well, if you want to learn how to play or how to, do country music, you got to know how to play guitar. So I kind of more just force it upon myself. And I learned a weird way to play at first. I think I posted a video of it. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It was sort of like a steel guitar. You're playing it almost like a steel guitar. I don't know where that came from. All I knew was I could tune this to a, a C and then use my thumb as a to change the notes. That was all I knew. And, (laughs) and it got me by for a really long time, surprisingly, but people would always look at me really confused. So yeah, I was wondering how long (laughs) that lasted. When did you start to flip it the right way and learn it that way? How many years did you play it on its side? I want to say it wasn't too long after maybe like a year after I had been playing it for that long. I honestly can't quite remember when I flipped it upright, but I eventually did. And uh, I think it was after watching, you know, CMT music videos, it showed me like, okay, you have to play the right (laughs) one. And I would just uh, YouTube and look up, you know, videos on where to put my fingers, learn the most basic chords and still using them to this day. (laughs) And so I saw in that post that you posted playing it wrong, that one of the first songs or the first song that you learned was Hinder, Lips of an Angel. And so how how much influence was there from rock coming in at that point of your life and country? Was it sort of coming from both directions at that point? Absolutely. I think it was very much an equal parts on both ends because uh, my mom listens to country, but she listens to um, Christian music and, and some of it was a little bit heavier. But then my dad would always either have like early 90s country or 
um, 80s metal. And that was what my mom also loved to listen to. So I love the hard, like hitting heavy metal, but I also ly- lyrically uh, loved country music because it was relatable for me. So I was like, one day I'm going to figure out how to do both of these at the same time. <laughs> well, it's funny. I saw you posted the cover that you did with Mechanics Wanted. Yes. The band. And so I was going to ask, is there a really fine line as a vocalist when you go from country to rock and just moving between those two genres? Because it feels like in your country music, you're very country, you have a very country sound, but then you can easily move, as I heard in that song, to that more rock side. So is it is it that fine line there? I definitely think so. Um, And already having a raspy voice, it helps with hitting the high, you know, edgy notes. So I think just in my songs personally, trying to figure out where I want those moments to be, or if they, if, if I even want the, in, them in there at all, you know, sorry, I can t- not talk this morning. <laughs> That's okay. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, but um, I think it all comes out in one way or the other eventually. And you talked about your parents not necessarily sort of pushing you towards music, but I wanted to talk about how they influenced your journey because I saw on social media that you and your dad didn't necessarily always get along because of how hard he pushed you. And so I was wondering just growing up your relationship with them and maybe you didn't see it back then, but how they have helped to shape you in this journey. Absolutely. I think them, uh, they, they never, I think the best thing about them was they never forced anything on me. Uh, like it made me do something that I didn't want to do. Um, and I think that helped me love music even more because it wasn't something that I had to do because growing up, I was always the kid. If you told me to do something, I was, I wanted to do opposite. Like I was just hard headed. So I think fortunately them always being supportive, they always, anything that I needed, if I, even if I didn't outright ask for it, my dad would always constantly ask, what do you need for your gigs? Like, can I, what can I help you with? So they always um, helped in any area they could, but again, they never made me feel like I had to do it. And that, that it was my only route in life. You know, like they were very much a component of do it if you love it, but don't feel like that's the only thing that you have to do. So it, it was always positive encouragement. And we always had our tiffs, you know, about real life parent kid stuff but um overall they very much nurtured my love for music and and I feel like helped me get to where I am now and it feels like you have a very tight family and I wanted to ask about a cousin Cameron that you lost back in 2011 and Uh I know that he meant a lot to you as well so I wanted to know just how he influenced your journey back then and then also (laughs) oh sorry and then it's a good thing though after he passed how you hold him with you and how that influences your journey moving forward yeah I'm only gonna cry because like nobody's ever asked about it so um I'm the only girl in my family I have two brothers all got cousins and he was the oldest and um he passed away quite a bit ago and that's what this tattoo is for because I felt like it represented his personality very well Uh, we all kind of felt like he was a a shining light in the room he was the most fun he danced all the time but when in regards to me he knew I loved music and he was always my number one supporter always showed up anywhere he wanted needed to show up and he was always the one that was like when you get famous I'm going to be your manager so (laughs) In my heart, he's always the OG manager, but um, he was just the most fun loving person and made me love life and music and, and helped me dance a little bit more, so to speak. So yeah, he's always been a very big influence to me and as a person as well, just who he was to everybody and how he treated people. That's very much a, a big influence in my life and I miss him every day and And I love getting to think about them. So thank you for asking that. Oh, you're welcome. That's awesome. And when it comes, (laughs) when it comes to, you mentioned singing in church growing up and then losing him. I don't know how that kind of worked with your belief in God and him passing, but I did see in 2014, there was a moment at Crossroads Worldwide, an event that it felt like that was a time in your life where you really moved into the faith a lot more. And so around that time, 
how did that inspire you personally, but also in a way to follow your dreams and follow your passion and follow this music thing as hard as you could? Absolutely. I mean, honestly, uh, hard times like that can make us waver in some way, shape or form in uh, what we believe in just life jolts us. And, but I think for me, the biggest thing in life was uh, I know I've always known there's something bigger than me. I don't think I would be here. Any of us personally, I don't, I don't know that we could just all be here and, and have these fantastic plans for our lives without something being involved. So um, faith was always important to me growing up. Um, I went to church. My mom kept us in church and it's important to me now. Again, I, I've always believed that there's reasons in life and, and thing and paths in life that we choose. And I've always felt that I was given a gift that um, I wanted to use for the greater good, so to speak. So um, I think I know how music touched my life and my hope is to hopefully do that the same way for other people. Later that year, you had a cover of Jason Aldean's Burn It Down that you posted. And all of a sudden, you got some coverage from some <laughs> online publications just out of the blue. And yes. so at that point, when that happened, did you already have it in your mind that you wanted to do music as a career? Or did that time of your life sort of bring that up and cement that, oh, man, this is cool. This is what I want to do. Yes, I always knew from day one that I wanted to do it. Did I think it was feasible? I don't know. And I think that's where I always had the little bit of hope in me that it would be possible, but just never really knew. Um, and I knew that was the most convenient way for me to, to do what I love at the moment was to post covers to YouTube because I'd gotten so much love and support from people just from uh, just one that I had posted. And then, so I just kept doing it. And that one in particular gave it jump started something. Cause it got me a little bit of, like you said, a media attention, and so at that point, I was like, okay, well, people kind of like it. So I guess I'll keep doing it and see what happens. So again, it's always been a little bit of the unknown, even now. I don't know. It's just weird. But um, yeah, I think you just keep that childlike faith that it's going to work out and um, push as hard as you can towards it. So yeah, so at the end of the day, really all you can do, right? And after graduation, it feels like you really did that. Now, after graduating high school, was that when you started playing at Windows? You mentioned Windows Dippin' Bar. Is that when you started playing there or did that begin even before you graduated high school? So I had a couple of different, like not music jobs throughout high school. And I was working at Academy Sports and Outdoors. It was just a sporting goods store. And I got an offer to come try out for this house band. And my parents were not gonna let me do it because it was an hour drive almost away from home. I'd be working Fridays and Saturday nights, uh, eight o'clock to two o'clock in the morning. It was just crazy stuff. And I had just graduated high school. So um, I made the decision on my own. My parents were not happy at first, but uh, I had went and auditioned, which they allowed me to do, but then they offered me the job. And then they were like, okay, we don't know if we want to let you do this. So I kind of, for the once in my life went against them, went and, and they finally got on board with the job because they knew I was like, I told them, I was like, y'all have your lives kind of planned out already. But me, I'm still young and I still have to make, take chances and do what I think is going to make me push towards my career. Finally, they understood that. And so I worked there for about two years. And uh, that was the moment I felt like really helped me know that I wanted to make it a career for sure. I just loved it so much. And in 2017, I saw a post in September, you were getting ready to, to kick off the Ashland Craft Band. You had a kickoff party planned at the Pump House, but that was also right around the time that you auditioned for The Voice. Correct. And so I was wondering, did that Ashland Craft Band, is that the same band you have now? Or was that something that didn't really move forward because you went on The Voice and sort of took another direction at that point? So uh, that we had actually formed that band kind of in between the audition of the voice. And so when we came back to play, we were actually doing like a, or I'm trying to think if it was like the, yeah, the homecoming thing from the voice. Oh, okay. Um, they are not still currently my band, but uh, we were together for a very long time. 
Uh, they were amazing, genuinely some of the best people that I know still to this day. Um, and that it was when we were young and we were figuring things out and we went through a couple of different band members, just everybody has life going on and trying to make it work out. But they taught me a lot of things uh, about, again, who I am and, and what I wanted to do. And they were there from the very beginning showing their support. So, and I actually met them through it because they all played for another band and I oh, opened okay. for that band. And then that band eventually kind of parted ways. And I was like, Hey, y'all want to start another one? <laughs> <laughs> so they were amazing people. Uh, Jason, who was my drummer, he kind of acted as the manager and every other thing, bless his heart. I don't know how he put up with us for that long, but he w- they were all so special to me and uh, they're all still back in South Carolina now. So yeah. <laughs> nice. And so around that time of 2017, if you hadn't had gone on The Voice, were you still prepared to sort of leave that house band at Wendell's and try and give it a go yourself? Or did The Voice help kick that off for you? The Voice definitely helped kick it off. Or kick it off. Um, and that was my hope going into the situation was that it would kind of get my name and my face out there and hopefully give me a little bit of a kickstart towards what I wanted to do because I come from a small town not many opportunities there for musicians wanting to go past that so um yeah the voice kind of brought that along and then some of that band actually did move with me to Nashville for a little bit um and then we all eventually kind of had to do our own thing but um they they did move with me for a little bit so it was it was a fun part of the journey and after the voice in January 2018, you had your homecoming at Wendell's for a sold out show. Now, what was that like going back there and not being a house band, but being a solo artist and selling the place out? What was that feeling like for you? It was mind blowing. I did not know what to expect. So I was like, they all know me as a house band singer. You know, I don't, I don't know how many people are going to show up to this, but they sold it out and we went back, they did it again. And I, that is genuinely my family, my day ones. They have been there from the very beginning of this whole journey. And it is always, I I hope that in my career, I continuously get to go back at least once a year, just to feel like I'm back home again. How important is that in this journey of remembering where home is and not becoming so focused on the future that you forget the past? I think it's so important just because it is what made you and you can't negate that. You know, you are who you are for a reason and all the things you kind of went through in life and where you're from, the people you've gotten to know and love. And just like on the album, you know, it wraps up with uh, come down and then that's the kind of place on there. And those are the two songs that I feel like talk about not forgetting where you're from just because it is what made you and, you can think you might hate it for a while when you leave, but when you come back, it, you, it reminds you of all the reasons why you love it. So, and then come down, you know, it talks about not getting too big for your britches, not forgetting where you came from because, or I mean, that being the place where if you do get too high off life or, you know, the moments that you uh, didn't foresee coming, you can always kind of come back down to your roots and be you. You get to go home and be you at the end of the day. Right. And that's special to me. I feel like you have to have that. And talking about being you, you made your first trip to Nashville in early 2018. Now you talk about being you. When you first started going there, what was that experience like in all of a sudden being opened up to this huge world of country music? Were were you comfortable in it at first? Did you go in knowing who you were as an artist and knowing who you wanted to be? Or when you got to Nashville, did you have to make sure you didn't get lost in what everyone else th- thought you should be? For sure. I think I definitely had a very good idea of who I wanted to be, but without knowing or without having that knowledge of songwriting quite yet, I think I was quite intimidated just because I knew what I wanted to say, but I didn't necessarily know how to say it. And I wanted to make sure that people hopefully took me seriously as a musician and not just another girl that wanted to come in here and, you know, do the thing. So there was a lot of pressure to really be serious and, and show that I did want this, but I was surrounded, I'm surrounded by the most amazing talented people that I could ask for. So it, it definitely put me at uh, ease after a while. So 
I'm much more comfortable now. I feel very at home. I feel like this is my second home. And uh, I encourage anybody who wants to maybe move here and do this. It's a very good community. I believe that in July of 2018, you had your first co-write in Nashville. That was with Jordan Fletcher. But in that experience, you took an Uber to see him and driving that Uber was Willie Morrison, who (laughs) you continue to write with to this day, (laughs) right? Yes. Oh my gosh. Willie, one of my favorite best buds. He just got married. I got to give him a shout out. But, um, I met him in the Uber and the typical Nashville thing happened. He was like, Oh, what are you in town for? And I'm like, Oh, I just actually had my first co-write. And he was like, Oh, before you leave, you know, maybe we should try to write. We did. I ended up loving it. And then now years later, we're still writing some of my favorite songs and I just genuinely cannot believe that it's kind of gone on this long. I didn't know that 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 Nashville would bring me those people. So it's very special to get to continue to write with somebody that very much knows me from the very beginning. So I can only hope that these songs that we continue to write, I think they're hits, but we have a great story to to tell about it. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's a great story in just realizing how open you have to be because when you go to Nashville, I imagine everyone's saying, I'm a writer, I'm a writer, I'm a writer. And it can maybe wear you down in um, not knowing who's serious about it and what rights you should do. But at the end of the day, you sort of have to be open to it, right? Because that's when the best experiences can come. My philosophy is you never know what's going to happen if you don't try. And there's so, there's so much talent here. Like you cannot deny that. And so it, it, it's, it is exhausting the whole writing process because there is so many people, but it's exhausting in a good way because I feel like that's when you kind of run across your gold mines. You know, you find these people that you would have never expected or even tried to write with and, and fate brings y'all together one night at Red Door <laughs> and then you end up writing a cool song. So um, yeah, I feel like you always have to try to really know what's going to come out of it. That's awesome. And in 2018, you started releasing original music. Now, what was that like in releasing those originals and finally stepping out of that bar band gig and playing covers and finally having your own stuff to hold up and say, this is who I am. This is me. It's a big old experimentation process, in my opinion. Um, But I think Thankfully, I had very great uh, producers and writers on the projects that I first released. But um, I I think it was just a a moment of, okay, this is where you really get to start experimenting and putting forth what you love. So um, it was just kind of the dipping your toes into the water, kind of, so to speak. So um, it was the start of something amazing with me and Jonathan. And, you know, he got to produce this whole record. So we uh, we've had some great opportunities to produce great songs. And, and I think those songs turned out exactly how I would have wanted them to. And I I hope we just get to do more. (laughs) And so how important were those first releases for discovering who you wanted to be coming in to your album? And when did writing for this album start? Was it sort of done in a chunk of time or are there songs from sort of your first rights back in 2018 that made it onto this album? Yes. The writing for this record is all over the place. Some are almost three years old and some are almost brand new. So um, fortunately with the traveling con theme, I think all the songs that we had written throughout over the past couple of years, they just all fit right into this box or box, so to speak of, of traveling kind. And that made the project a lot easier just to come together. And it felt right. Everything about it felt very natural to me. And so we, it was just a matter of putting them in the order that we wanted to put them in and how to tell that story necessarily as a, as a whole. So um, they're, they're all still uh, all over the place, but I felt like they all kind of complemented each other well. And when you listen to the album from front to back within the sound and within the lyrics, can you pull out sort of at what point in your journey they were written? I think so. Um, And I think it also listening to them, it it can put me back in the place of when we were writing them and what I was doing and what we were all talking about in the moment. Um, Yeah. So I think it definitely points out those moments to me and, and, uh, 
hopefully it does for other people. And well, when I get to tell the stories anyways, but for example, like mimosas in the morning, I remember that was during the pandemic and we were riding on zoom because that was the thing then, because nobody <laughs> got to see each other in person. And I just remember the day being bright and sunny and, and that song feels bright and sunny to me. So I think it worked out perfect. And following the release, you were on the Nashville sign. Now, what does that mean when you're going into an album release? It's your first album. You don't have any idea how it's going to do really. So to have those moments of, wow, you know, this might be a thing for me. This might help launch me. What do those moments mean? Oh, they're the biggest moments to me in my life so far. They're kind of the milestones, which you were hoping to hit, you know, in this career. And thankfully I have an amazing team around me. And I think that is what's really, really brought this to life is just having these people around me that are so supportive and they put me on a freaking billboard. And I I think it's just a big confidence booster and it, it helps you know that you're moving in the right direction and just all the feedback that I've gotten for this project, I, I can't even put into words how much it's meant to me because, again, like you said, you don't really know what the result of it is going to be. You don't really know how it's going to turn out or people are even going to like it. So you're just holding your breath when you release it. Cross your fingers and wait for the wait for the uh, reviews to come in. But like I said, everything has been so positive, and the the feedback has been exactly what I've hoped for. So just to see a a billboard and have these people around me that are so supportive and endlessly working to try to make this exciting for me. It's, it's the biggest blessing I could have ever asked for, for sure. And I saw a post on your social media, I believe right around the album release saying it was really special for you because over the past two years, since you've been in Nashville, you've been kind of hard on yourself on I should be here. I should be here. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And so now with this album release and seeing all the positivity that's come with it and going out on tour, do you have to make sure that you tell yourself, look at what I'm doing and not be like, well, what's the next thing? What do I have to go? Where do I have to go next? What do I have to do? And that's very much the mindset in our business. If you want to, you know, stay relevant, but Oftentimes, I think we stop where we don't stop to really soak in everything that we have accomplished up until a certain point. And that has been me for the past two years. And I think that was kind of a reminder to myself to stop and smell the roses and really take in all the accomplishments and all the things that you've worked so hard for. Because, again, as musicians, we are always thinking about what's next and what what's the most next exciting thing. And. And how do we keep this thing going? And for me, I don't think I ever gave myself the opportunity to really soak it in. And so now I've really been hard on myself about trying to stop and take it in. So I just wanted to remind people that it's okay to celebrate yourself and and celebrate the little wins and the big wins just as much. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's an, a never-ending process of reminding yourself that you've got to go easy and not always push yourself to the max, you know? Yeah. And so with that, are you taking time to celebrate the album or are you already looking ahead and starting writing and starting looking at what the next project might look like? Honestly, I think right now I've just been soaking in the record and uh, really trying to get a feel for what everybody's favorite songs are. That way we can uh, hopefully get on one on the radio or something soon Fingers crossed. We'll see. But I don't know. I really haven't thought much past that. I think right now I'm just focused on writing and um, I think that's how it should be. I kind of just go with the flow when it comes to music. Um, I I hate trying to force things and uh, I hope that maybe when the right song is written that it'll kind of make us know what to do next. And I, I already have some on the back burner that are ready to be released. So I'm excited to eventually get to that point but for now I just want everybody to be able to enjoy this giant body of work that I've that I'm getting to put out for the first time and and see what they're liking about it and as far as sort of the stats go can you tell what one of the favorites off the album is for your fans at this point right now from the looks of it everybody uh, seems to be really enjoying make it past Georgia and also leaving you again that was another one which thank goodness because that's one of my favorite ones 
So those top two have been very uh, present on social media and people tagging us and stuff. So I'm excited to see where those go. Two of my top favorite songs on the record, hopefully on the radio one day. Yeah, I was going to say heading into the album, was there one song that you wanted people to attach to that you wanted to be their favorite song on the album? Or are you just sort of so immersed in the whole album that every song has something special for you? Absolutely. I I think the entire album, it's so hard when people ask, like, what is your favorite song? Because they're all written from such a different place and they all have different meanings to me. So it is really hard. It's like picking your favorite kid. You can't do that. It's (laughs) it's <laughs> so I but I do I will say leaving you again honestly is probably one of my favorite um songs just because I felt like we really nailed the epitome of country music with that song I think it represents country music well I think it reminds me of the music I love growing up so if I had to choose I think that would be one of my top ones And with all the success that has come to you over the past, you know, it hasn't been that long, not even a year, um, even since the album release, what do your parents think from all those years of pushing you so hard and not necessarily uh, trusting in this dream all the way along? What do they think now? Oh, they, they have always thankfully been on board with the whole Nashville thing. They didn't love letting me move at first, but um, they are just beside themselves that we finally get some music to listen to as a family and that I'm finally just getting to make music that I've wanted to make for so long now. And it's my own, you know, it's not stuff we've listened to on the radio anymore. It's not covers anymore. It's actually stuff that I've taken the time to write and and put my heart and soul into. So I know they're so proud. I know they're happy to see the support pay off for sure. So Um, I'm excited they're coming to the Nashville show, our very last uh, show with Zach Brown Band. So I'm excited to finally get to celebrate that with them. They didn't get to celebrate the record deal signing necessarily because the pandemic hit. So um, as a family, I'm excited to get to celebrate all of our accomplishments up until now. Yeah. What is that show going to be like? Because you say Nashville sort of like your second home now. So playing Bridgestone Arena has got to be a pretty crazy feeling. It's scary, but in the best way, because that's just your your peers, your, the people you've been around for the past three years now. So um, it's very exciting, but I think it's just I'm definitely wanting to be on my A game for that show. And it's the last night. Uh, it's the end of it all for now. It sounds so depressing, but um, I just want it to be a fun night for everybody and really go out with a bank. I think that's it's going to am- be fun. That's amazing. Well, congratulations on everything. Travel thank and you. Kind is the album. People can get it everywhere. Congratulations. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I had a blast. Thank you once again so much for listening and thank you to Ashland for stopping by and sharing her story. Be sure to check out her album, Travel in Kind, wherever you stream your music. Please also be sure to like, share, follow, subscribe to us wherever you are listening. You can leave us a review, a rating, tell your friends, your family, your neighbors to come on over and have a listen. That support is huge. Thanks so much once again for listening and we'll see you next time on Country Music Made Me. Mm-hmm.